Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful today channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Significant repercussions result from Steffi's actions, some of which she could not have foreseen. While Ridge must cope with Brooke's response to Hope's termination, Carter makes the decision to approach. And don't assume that Luna is no longer involved. Continue reading for all the specifics. After Steffi and Ridge fire Hope and have Charlie take her out of the building, tensions are at an all-time high and feelings are running high. Brooke finds out about Ridge's shocking treachery. Spoilers for Tuesday, November 5 th's episode of Bold and Beautiful. Carter devises a scheme to alter the balance of power at Forrester because he is angry over Ridge and Steffi's betrayal of Hope and frustrated by their lack of interest in his suggestion. Wednesday, November 6 spoilers for Bold and Beautiful reveal that Finn and Steffi fervently declare their love and devotion to one another. Hope and Carter's unquestionable chemistry lights a fire between them, leading to passionate and sincere declarations of love. In an emotional discussion, Brooke and Ridge wrestle with their allegiances to their girls and to one other while facing the difficult truths of their relationship. According to Thursday, November 7th spoilers on Bold and Beautiful, Electro and will develop a strong bond as she embraces his flirtation. Despite Eric's attempts to change her mind, Steffi is adamant about her choice and her hate of hope. Friday, November 8th spoilers for Bold and Beautiful, Zend confronts Steffi about the consequences of her behavior. Luna learns important details from Poppy's visit to her jailed daughter. Luna sends Bill a heartfelt letter that makes him consider the circumstances and decisions that led them to this point. In this instance, Steffi dismisses Hope. Carter makes an effort to garner support for his beliefs. Brooke finds Carter and Hope. The bold and the beautiful recap for October 28th to November 1st included a shocking moment when Hope literally tripped and Steffi fired her, capping off a turbulent five days in Los Angeles. October 28th, 2024, Monday. When Brooke entered on Hope and Carter, the action really got going. The two spent the remainder of the episode describing their relationship after she obviously interrupted their office shenanigans. In essence, they stated that they are still unable to define themselves. They're taking it slow and watching what happens. Brooke, meantime, wanted to know if they were sincere. She inquired a few times about Carter and Katie, but primarily, she wanted to confirm that they were no longer together. According to Carter, they were friends now, and that was likely all that ever existed between them. But Brooke was advised by Hope and Carter to keep this developing friendship a secret. Brooke concurred. Steffi, Eric, and Ridge talked about Carter's pitch in the CEO's office. They were astounded that he had such a complex idea for Forrester. They all thought of them as a family company. They didn't want too many investment bankers, which is what Carter suggested doing. Steffi was curious as to why now. Why had Carter thrown this pitch to them at this particular moment? What did she guess? Carter was being manipulated by Hope. Steffi emphasized that Carter had been on her side not too long ago. He is currently advocating for HFTF Hardcore. Hope must have done it. At last, Hope, Carter, and Brooke carried on discussing what Brooke had seen when Steffi entered unexpectedly. She wanted to know what they were discussing right away. October 29, 2024, Tuesday Steffi wasn't having any fun. She wanted to hear what Brooke, Carter, and Hope were discussing. Lying, they claimed that Carter's company goal was the main topic of their conversation. Steffi had to inform him that she didn't think the idea was very Forrester and that it was too big. Additionally, he would need to speak with Ridge and Eric to find out their opinions. She also alerted Carter to Hope's deceptive tactics. In response, he assured her that he was not mentally weak. Steffi then requested a private conversation with Hope. Steffi tried to get to the heart of the conflict between Carter and Hope. Hope was using Carter to help save Hope for the future, and she was sure of it. In the meantime, Ridge and Eric agreed with Carter's brilliant proposal. They believed that Forrester was in the wrong. Later, Electra, Lania Grace, and Ivy, Ashley Brewer, entered the room. 
The jewelry line reboot was accepted by Ridge and Eric after they were asked to present their brand. Carter and Brooke spoke elsewhere. She still wanted to know if Carter was really interested in her daughter. She needed Carter to be completely committed to supporting Hope, after all. He acknowledged that he was, and he refused to waffle like Liam did. At last, Steffi spoke directly to Hope, reminding her that she was the only reason her line was still alive. And she and HFTF were done if she ever again stepped over the line with her husband. Carter stopped the contentious conversation after overhearing it. She had no right to threaten Hope and her line, he warned her. Steffi should refrain from punishing her in her capacity as CEO. October 30, 2024, Wednesday. At home, Finn and Steffi snuggled together. They both knew they had to go to work even though they didn't want to. They talked about Steffi's problems at work, specifically Hope and Carter, and the fact that she didn't even believe they should pursue the jewelry line before parting ways. Steffi unintentionally neglected to bring her iPad with her as she left for work. He said that Brooke's bedroom plans were in, and he looked at them when Hope and Carter were by themselves in their office at FC. He had to be reminded that he had been thinking about her in lingerie once more when Hope, of course, flirted with him. When Brooke later interrupted them, he asked them to recall their location. They had stated that they wanted to keep their situationship quiet because they had already had close calls. In the end, Carter made the decision to go discuss any conclusions made regarding his plan with Ridge. Ridge and Taylor discussed her broken heart syndrome and her progress in the interim. She even went to see Grace for a physical. Hearing about the entire chakra healing procedure made the doctor delighted. Carter cut them off in the middle of their conversation to inquire as to whether his thoughts had been decided. When Carter insisted that this was what Forrester needed to do in order to develop, Ridge became a little defensive. Ridge believed that no decision had been made and that they were already doing it. This was a major decision, and they all needed time to consider it. Carter expressed his hope that Ridge would support him in this matter and mentioned that Steffi had allowed personal issues to interfere. At last, Finn carried the tablet Steffi had left at home into Hope's office. Hope had, of course, decided to switch to one of Brooke's bedroom designs. She thought she would surprise Carter, so she was really taken aback when Finn did it instead. When she stumbled into Finn's hesitant arms, the awkwardness just became worse. When Steffi entered the room, she saw Hope in lingerie in Finn's arms. Hope you get off my husband right now, she screamed instantly. Steffi demanded to know what was going on when Finn went to go to work, because she wanted to know what the devil Hope was thinking. Hope attempted to clarify that she wasn't wearing this outfit for Finn. But when Steffi asked for a name, she said nothing. Hope didn't say anything, and that was all she had to do. Thus, Steffi dismissed her. In addition to dressing up as a witch for Halloween, Sheila went one step further and decked out I.L. Giardino. Even if Deacon didn't like it as much as she did, he accepted it since, among other reasons, it was too late to reverse. Deacon had the opportunity to speak with Carter about how he had his daughter's back when he went over for some pizza. He was glad someone at Forrester had Hope's back. Brooke and Taylor talked about Hope and Steffi being on opposing sides back at Forrester. Carter's support of Hope made Brooke happy. Steffi didn't believe Hope at all because Taylor disputed Hope's version of events and mentioned Hope kissing Finn. Brooke reassured them that there would never be another incident between Hope and Finn. When Steffi stormed in and revealed what had transpired between Hope and Finn, Taylor and Ridge were once again left alone. In addition, she informed them that she had fired Hope and hoped her father would support her decision. November 1, 2024, Friday when Katie entered, Hope was wearing her usual business attire once more. Katie assured her aunt that she would have her back after explaining what had transpired. She didn't believe Ridge would be happy about this dismissal. However, she would speak well of her niece. Carter, meantime, proceeded to talk to Eric about his plans for Forrester's future. Carter's study and preparation of this proposal were much appreciated by Eric. He pointed out that Forrester would need to take out loans in order to make all of this happen, which would put him in debt for the first time ever and wasn't going to happen under Eric's supervision. For him, that was a no. Hope interrupted Ridge, Steffi, and Taylor to give her perspective. 
It wasn't what Steffi believed it to be, she claimed. Ultimately, how could she have known that Finn would be present at that particular moment? Sadly, Hope failed to provide an explanation for her decision to wear lingerie to work. Although Steffi acknowledged the sound, she claimed she would say anything, even lying through her teeth, to keep her reputation intact. Steffi repeatedly cautioned Hope. She was also aware of the repercussions should anything else occur. They stopped funding HFTF, and since the supposed girl was a fraud and a phony, she had to leave. Ridge and Taylor witnessed Steffi refer to Hope as another S.T. from the Valley, similar to what Stephanie, Susan Flannery, had called Brooke so long ago. Steffi promised to send Hope's belongings and wanted her out right now. Hope abruptly said in the corridor, in front of Charlie, Dick Christie, and other Forrester staff members, how proud she was to be a Logan, and that even Stephanie eventually came to terms with it. Hope walked shamefully to the elevator when Ridge urged her to go. Steffi expressed gratitude to Ridge for helping her. His expression showed that he was aware that he would soon find himself in hot water with Brooke. Carter, in a convertible, drew up, stopped, and got out, curious to find out what had happened, and Hope hurried outside. Hope requested him to take her away after telling him she had been fired. They're not getting away with this, Carter muttered, glancing at the Forrester creation signage after they kissed. Eric Forrester is about to face one of the most unsettling revelations of his long and storied career at Forrester Creations. It begins innocently enough with him overhearing whispers about the ongoing rift between his granddaughter Steffi Forrester and Hope Logan, a family feud that has left a palpable tension at the company. Initially, Eric dismisses it as just another bout of family rivalry, something he's seen before and expects to settle over time. However, as he digs deeper, he realizes that Steffi's power play against Hope might just be the tip of the iceberg. Eric's discovery unfolds when he starts noticing some peculiar changes in Forrester Creation's business structure. Unbeknownst to Hope, Steffi has been gradually reshaping the company to shift the focus away from Hope for the future, while consolidating her own power and influence. At first, these changes seem minor, with Steffi reallocating resources away from Hope's line under the pretense of budget adjustments and marketing shifts. But as Eric scrutinizes the numbers and the organizational changes, he realizes that Steffi's strategy goes beyond sidelining Hope, she's setting the stage for a much larger transformation of Forrester creations, one that could forever alter its brand and core values. Eric's suspicions grow when he overhears a conversation between Steffi and Carter Walton, the COO who has been steadfastly supporting her vision for the company. The exchange reveals that Steffi's intentions involve more than just reasserting her role as CEO, she's planning a major shift in Forrester Creation's market identity. Instead of balancing tradition with modernity, Steffi's vision is purely profit-driven, aiming to attract high-profile investors and take the company public. This move would introduce new pressures to maximize profit, potentially sacrificing the legacy of creative excellence and integrity that Eric had built. To Eric, it becomes clear, Steffi is not merely trying to outshine Hope. She's orchestrating a scheme to redefine the very essence of Forrester creations, turning it into something unrecognizable in pursuit of power, wealth, and influence. Shocked and disappointed, Eric confronts Steffi, hoping his granddaughter's motivations aren't as ruthless as they appear. But Steffi's reaction is defensive and unapologetic. She argues that the fashion industry has evolved and that Forrester Creations needs to adapt if it wants to remain competitive. According to Steffi, the brand's legacy is only as valuable as its bottom line, and her plans to take the company public represent a modern, forward-thinking approach that will secure its future. She dismisses Eric's concerns as sentimental, accusing him of clinging to outdated ideals that no longer have a place in today's cutthroat industry. Horrified, Eric realizes that Steffi has fully embraced a vision for Forrester creations that's at odds with the family values and creative spirit that he has always cherished. Her ambition is driving her to push away anything, or anyone, that doesn't fit her plan, and Hope's line is just one casualty in Steffi's broader scheme. Eric's heartbreak deepens as he sees the length Steffi is willing to go to secure her version of Forrester's future, even if it means severing family bonds and discarding the company's legacy. This newfound knowledge leaves Eric at a crossroads. He must decide whether to take a stand against Steffi's plan, risking further family conflict, or to quietly accept her vision and watch his life's work transformed into a corporate machine. 
The stakes have never been higher for Eric as he faces the reality of Steffi's ambitions and the painful decision of whether he can support a granddaughter who is willing to sacrifice her family for the sake of power.